All right, if you're using a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE, you know how it goes. If you want a notification, you'll get a notification. But if you're using a window manager, say like BSPWM, i3, then you have to set up everything yourself, which is not actually that hard, fortunately. But in this video, I'll show you how you can set up notifications, how you can style them, how you can put icons in them, how you can even do stuff like use them as volume control. Right here, I'm having a notification show me what my volume is at right now. So I'm gonna show you how to do all that and more in this video. So first off, let's just show what we're going to get. We're gonna get something like this. Just a small little notification here at the top right of your screen, or honestly, wherever you want. It's not going to be that complicated and that crazy. You can configure it to look a bit nicer if you want. But that's basically what your notifications are going to look like. And let's do that by installing a package called Dunst. So this is going to be the notification daemon that we're going to use in this video. This is going to power all of your notifications. And if you're on Arch at least, I think it's the same package and you can download it from all the official repositories. But in my case, I'm just going to install with Pac-Man with Dunst right here. And once that is installed, you're going to want to start it with Dunst, as you can probably guess. And you're also going to want to add this to your startup file. So you would add this to your BSPWMRC or your i3 configuration file just to automatically run whenever your computer starts up. And now that you have Dunst set up, you can now run notify send, pass in whatever notification that you want, and you will get this right here. Now it's probably not going to look exactly like this because I've done a little bit of configuration. It'll be a little bit smaller, the font will be different, the colors are different. But if you want to start doing some configuration, let's get started. So a default configuration file is going to be found in, let's see, slash Etsy slash Dunst slash Dunst RC. There's your default configuration. And we're just gonna to wanna to copy it to dot config slash Dunst, create a directory if you don't have it already, slash Dunst RC. All right, this is gonna be your starter configuration file. Let's open it up. So it's probably gonna be something very similar to this. Like I said, I've already done a little bit of configuration but you're gonna see a whole bunch of different options in here. And let me just show you which ones are important. If you want, you can go through all of these, but most of them aren't really that useful. I'll go over the ones where you can configure how it looks and things like that. So first things first, let's go over the sizing. So this is going to be a width of 400 pixels across, a height of 300 pixels, as you can guess. If you want it to be a variable size, say you don't always want it to be 400 pixels across, you can change it to automatically resize. So let's say zero and 400. So it's gonna be anywhere between zero pixels and 400 pixels, depending on how much space it needs. If it needs less, it will obviously be less. If it needs more, then it will be the maximum 400. But let me just leave this as is. This is going to be the origin. I like to have mine on the top right. You can have yours on the bottom. You can have yours on the left, wherever you want. And this is going to be the X and Y value that you want it offset from the top or the right hand side of the screen or wherever your origin is. For me, I have a X value of zero and a Y value of 25 just because the top bar up here is 25 pixels high. So I want it to be under that as you can see. And that's it for how to size things. All the rest of these you don't need to worry about too much. You can also make this partially transparent if you want. I like to have it opaque, but if you want, you can make it maybe 50% transparency or maybe 80, something like that. If you want it to be a little bit transparent and it's not going to take effect right away. If you want to restart Dunst, then you're going to want to kill all Dunst. And then after we kill it, let's just send a new notification so that it starts up again. So let's just say kill all Dunst and then send a new notification. As you can see, this is only 80% as you can see, it's 80% transparent. Actually, I thought it would be 80% um, opaque, but I guess if we want it to be, uh, that's more what I wanted. So if you want your notifications to be slightly transparent like that, go ahead and knock yourself out. I'm okay with that, so I'm going to set it to its initial value of zero. Down here, we have all the padding. This is just going to be the padding around your notification. I think this is pixels or something like that, but this is going to be the Y padding. So the padding that I have on top and bottom and the horizontal padding will be the padding on the sides. 
And then finally, you can set uh, padding between the icon and the text just to give it a little bit more breathing room. And then right here, this is going to be the width around the notification. So as you can see, I have a two pixel border around everything and you can up that to something more if you want, but I just left it at two. You can also change the frame color, but you can also define this later on as well. So you don't necessarily have to change this. And then let's get into the font right here. So you can change the font right here, of course. I changed it from the default monospace font and I also upped the font size a little bit. And then right here, you can define what you actually want uh, the markup inside your notification to be. So if you really want to customize it, you can do this, but I've just left it at the defaults right here. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to bold the title of the notification or the summary, and then it's going to display in smaller text or unbolded text, just the body of the notification. That's all I really need. But if you also want to include the app name that sent you the notification, you can do that right here. You would just put in something like this and it will tell you exactly where the notification came from. But I'm not going to do that now. You can align it to the left, the center or the right. And you can also vertically center it as well. For me, I've just left these at the defaults. And the rest of these you can leave as their defaults most of the time. And next, let's talk about icons. So as you can see, I have a few icons here. I have a speaker for my volume. I have a little bell for my normal notifications. And you can configure all that here. You can say if it's to the left or the right, you can tell it the max icon size if you want. So if you have some giant icons that you're loading in, but you only want it to be maximum 32 by 32, then you can add this. And finally, you're going to want to put the path to the default icons. Now, if you install some kind of icon pack like GNOME icons, let's say it's going to be under user slash share and under icons right here. And this is if you installed it, say, I think I installed it with GNOME icon theme. You can also install Adweta. These are some pretty good icons right here with an icon theme, at least in Arch Linux. And so if you want, you can leave a link to this folder right here. So that would be slash user slash share slash icon slash adweta and then maybe something like 32 by 32. And you can add more paths as well with a colon right here. So if you want to add even more here, let's say one more path right here, then you can add that. But I personally don't use any of these icon packs. I just basically put some PNGs in a folder and you can see those Let me clear all this out. And as you can see, these are just some white icons that I downloaded from Font Awesome, saved them as a PNG, and now you can use them here. So you would just put a path to a folder with PNGs. SVGs work as well, I think. And then I'll show you how to actually use these in your notifications later. But this is how you put in the folder where they're located. And next, let's just go over the colors. So I guess here also we have a the corner radius if you want rounded corners for yours. I don't really care, so I'll leave that as is. But down here, let me show you the colors. And so there's going to be three different types of notifications with Dunst. You're gonna have low urgency, normal, and critical. So for me, I've set the normal and low urgency to the same color, I'm okay with that. But if you want to send a notification with high urgency, then you can do that with notify-send, and then you would say something like help, and then the dash U option will put in the urgency. So it can be low, normal, or in this case, critical. And as you can see, this is a bright red. It's not gonna disappear unless I click on it. So this is for something that's very important. You're not really going to miss this right here. And so right here, you can define all the different colors for all of these. So as you can see, the low and the normal are just some basic colors that I have here. And the critical one is all these reds. And you can set a different timeout for all of these. So by default, a low and a normal notification will last for 10 seconds before disappearing. A critical notification will not disappear unless you actually dismiss it yourself. You click on it or use some keyboard shortcut. And you can actually also set an icon for each of these as well. So I put a new icon here and the bell that is under the folder that I showed you before. But that's why if I just send something with a normal urgency, then it's just going to have the bell here. I guess if you want, you can add like an exclamation point here. So you really are aware of the critical nature of this notification, but for me, I'm okay. And by default, if you left click on the notifications, they will disappear. 
And if you right click, it will close all of them. And you can change those if you want here under the mouse section. And of course you can read all of this right here. I'm not going to explain all of this, but if you really want to configure this as much as you want, you can read all the different options you have here. But once you're done with that, you're probably going to have some basic configuration already set up. So let me show you a few more options that you can pass into your notifications. But before I introduce all the options to you, I do want to let you know about a new command called Dunstify. So Dunstify is basically like Notify Send, except it has a few more features. So Notify Send will work with GNOME or any of these desktop environments, but Dunstify is specifically for Dunst, so it has a few more features that the other ones don't. But this works basically the same as Notify Send. So you can say hello, you can say uh, urgency of normal, that works fine. So you can also pass in an icon here with dash I, and then this is just going to be an icon in the folder that you would set up in your configuration. So in my folder I have an icon called volume mute.png, but you don't need the extension. So if I run this, then we get a muted icon. That is what we wanted. You can also put in the timeout here. So if you don't want it to last for the default 10 seconds, then you can pass in dash T, and let's say we only want it for one second. So this is by milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. As you can see, it's already gone. And we can also pass in an ID here with R. So normally, if you have a notification like this, then normally you'll just, uh, let's just give an example. Normally all the notifications will just stack up here. But in some cases, you might not want this to happen. Like for example, this volume, I don't want every time I change the volume to get a new notification. Then I would just have a huge list of the same volume notification right here, which I don't want at all. So if you want, you can set a dash R. You can set an ID here, just some random number that is not going to interfere with any other ID. And so if we run this, now if we run another command with the same ID, then it will just replace the old one. So as you can see, they're not stacking up like before. It's just replacing the other one. So that's useful if you want them to overwrite the last one. You would just add this dash R option right here. And let me actually show you the volume script I have right here. So this is just a bash script that I wrote. And let me show you how to put all of these different uh, options together. So as you can see, every time I go up or down with the volume, I want to run this function and it is sending a notification with the urgency of low, uh, ID of 9993, so each one gets replaced. And this dash H option with the int, value, and volume, what this is doing is it's rendering the progress bar right here. That's how you would get that. And if you don't wanna write something like this all out by yourself, I will have a link to this in the description and you can modify it a bit. If you wanna have something similar for your volume, or maybe for your brightness on your laptop, you can do something like that. This dash I option is just getting the icon, is going to be either volume up or volume down. This is just the body of the notification right here. And this is saying that I only want it to be visible for 2000 milliseconds. So if you just make a script like this, you get a really nice volume indicator right here. And so you would just define in your keyboard shortcuts. Uh, after I made a script like this, I would just run change volume, and then let's say up, to go up, down, to go down. And finally, let's go over a few more keyboard shortcuts. So I did tell you that you can click on these to make these disappear, but maybe you want some keyboard shortcut to automatically make these disappear, or maybe to even bring up some notification that you might've missed. So maybe you were away from your computer and you wanna see all the notification that you missed. I can press a keyboard shortcut and retrieve all the ones that I just ran, as you can see. And so you do this with Dunst CTL. And so we can run dash dash help to get all the options here. So we're going to have close to close the last notification, close all to close all of them, and then history pop will basically get the last notification from history. So that's what I ran to get all of these from the history. So first off, let's close all of these with dunst ctl close all. That closes all of them. We can run history pop to get the latest one and we can close that. But you probably don't wanna type in these commands. You probably want to have them be some keyboard shortcuts that you type in. So what you can do is you can open up uh, whatever you use to configure your keyboard shortcuts. For me, I use the application SX 
HKD, but of course you can use whatever you want. And down here, I just have the notification commands right here. So if I type control space, it will close the last one. Control shift space will close all of them. Control grave will get the last history item right here. And so you would just put these in your keyboard shortcuts in order to control this from your keyboard. Finally, let's go over a few more advanced things. So let me close this out. And down here in the configuration, we have a few more things. Basically a few advanced rules if you want. So if you want some notifications to be completely ignored by the history, you don't want them to be brung up whenever you run the last history command. Then you can add a rule here and you can basically name this rule whatever you want. It's not that important, but I'm naming it history ignore. And this is saying any notification with the app name of change volume will be ignored by the history. So as you can see, if I run a bunch of commands from my change volume command and then check the history, they are not in there at all. And I've achieved this by, let me just open up this script again for you. So I passed in the dash A option and this will uh, set the app name. So I've set it to change volume. And so any notification with uh, app name of change volume will not go into the history is what this is saying. And of course, if this is a different program entirely, like maybe Spotify or something, I think it's going to be something like Spotify or just the name of the program. But if you're not sure, then what you can do is you can, let's say kill Dunst right now and then let's say dunst dash print and this will give you information on every notification that's get, that gets run. So if I try to play something from my music player then it will tell me that the app name is music player daemon. So for example if I didn't want this to be in the history then I would put in obviously music player daemon right here and it would ignore that in the history. And you can do a whole bunch of things. So you can say any notifications from, for example, Spotify. I want to skip display. I don't want them to display at all. That is an easy way if you're getting annoyed by notifications. You can also say any notification with the summary of foobar, I don't want displaying. So if I save this and then kill Dunst and say notify, send foobar, then it doesn't actually display. And that's because of this rule right here if you really have something against foobar. And you can also put some wild cards in here. So anything that includes the word foobar, we don't want in here. Anything around foobar will not be displayed as well. And so take a look through here if you want some more advanced functionality. You can even do something like if I see a notification with the word script inside it, then I want it to run an actual script right here. So I just have a, a quick little script that's just going to add something so let me say a uh, script right here. And then it's going to run this script right here, this script called temp. What it's going to do is it's going to echo something into dunst log. So I can just open up temp dunst log and something is now here just because I ran a notification with the word script. So as you can see, the possibilities here are really endless. You can do a whole ton with notifications right here. And there's a whole bunch of examples right here just to really make it easy for you if you want some more advanced functionality. So if you're running the messaging application Pigeon and there's a notification with the word says in it, then you can make it critical. But if you really just want the full story, I would just look through here and add any kind of advanced functionality that you'd like. All right, and that's all you need to know about notifications. That's probably more than you would ever need to know about notifications. But now you can install Dunst, customize it to look as nice as you want it to and now you can get distracted by notifications as much as you want.